Hey, welcome to the Magic Blog. Looking at a different blog each week to see what's made it magic and why it's doing so well. So today's episode is about Sue Bryce. She's an Australian photographer. And by the way, this episode is going to be a bit shorter than the other two if you've watched some of the earlier shows. I'm going to be doing this for about half an hour. So just going through some of the main things that make a blog work and looking at how specific blogs have done this in quite some detail. So this is going to be really useful if you're just starting out blogging, if you're thinking about blogging, or if you already have a blog, but you'd like to know what is the secret of some of the blogs that get the most views on the web and on the planet. Okay, so I'm personally picking websites, blogs that I love to look at, so it's kind of biased, but they are blogs that are, you know, by successful people and that get a lot of traffic. So Sue Bryce, you might have heard of her, you might not. She's an Australian photographer who has an interesting story which could be relevant to you if you've ever been in this kind of situation. And she basically began her photography studio quite some time ago and she's when we get to look at her work, you'll see what I'm talking about here. She's very talented. She has a real knack for putting women at ease and allowing them to feel comfortable in front of a camera. So what she noticed after some time was that even though she was one of the best photographers in her area, other photographers would actually get more customers and their studios were financially better performing because they marketed themselves better. And Sue says she had this kind of uh, mindset that if you're good, the right people will find you. And what she came to realize is that that, that is probably true, but it just takes a lot longer. <laughs> so why not make it easier for those people to find you now so that you can start having the success, uh, the, the financial benefits, the expansion that is possible right now? Why take the long, slow hard route. <laughs> so she began looking at how she could market her photography better and how she could capitalize on her particular skills and what she could do to make people know about her. So it's really interesting because she went from struggling as a photographer to making 25,000 Australian dollars a month. So that's a huge jump, you know, 25k a month. So there was a lot of components to that. But I'm going to show you her blog so we can uncover some of it and look at how she did this. Because one of the key things she did was with her website. Okay, so bear that in mind for yourself. You know, if you have a services uh, based business, are there ways that your website, your blog can be working for you more than it is now? And stay tuned to the end because if you don't have a way, then I'm going to share with you something at the end that can help anyone with this. <laughs> it's so easy that anyone can do it. Okay, so let's go and look at Sue's blog. I'm going to take off my screen now. So you're going to be looking at the website at my screen. So just give me one second. Okay, All right. So, you should now be able to see some Chrome applications. <laughs> All right, so who is Sue Bryce? This is Sue Bryce's website. And, uh, you know, I like her a lot because she has a dog on there. <laughs> Check out this picture. Anyway, so let's look at, at the home page. So Sue, Sue's speciality is, oh, is making sort of boudoir or glamour shots of women. So she she doesn't just do sort of portrait photography. She really takes women out of their everyday look and makes them feel amazing. Actually, I found a quote about this that she... Uh -huh. Let's find that. Oh. Okay, sorry, I can't find that right now. 
She says she basically wants every woman to feel amazing and every woman to to be able to celebrate her body and how she looks at every stage of her life and not to be only sort of celebrating it when she's young and pretty. So what she began doing when she realized that she was sort of falling behind because other people were were doing more marketing, were getting a better image across, is that she had the idea of doing this a before and after. And I think this is genius. So let's you see here she has she has she started taking pictures of her clients when they first came to her studio and then putting with the picture of them after they've gone through some styling and and after she's taken the photos of them. So this is this was a major turning point in her business because all of a sudden people could see what value they would get from coming to her and this is a really important point if you're using your blog or your website to market is you want to be able to show your potential person how you're going to make their life better what is the benefit you're going to give them you know like all human desire and Sue I actually read this on Sue's blog she put it really well she says that often people talk about value, but another way to think of it that's perhaps a bit easier is you want to show how you're going to increase something in that person's life. So it depends on what you do. In Sue's case, you could say that she's increasing a woman's sense of her own beauty or of her self-worth and of her, her kind of gift to the world by her, just by showing because one of the things that she does is she helps women take down some of the barriers that they have when they're photographed. You might have noticed yourself, you know, if you've ever been photographed professionally or even just at a friend's house, often when people see a camera right in front of them, they tend to freeze up a bit and this kind of wall goes up between them and the camera because they're scared they don't look good, they're scared that they don't, um, they're not pretty enough or that they're not photogenic, you know, there's millions of reasons. And what Sue's very good at doing is at lowering those barriers and those walls so that people can really relax and sort of come out. So she's not only looking at how women can appear more beautiful, she actually helps them to be more themselves, is what she says, you know, by lowering those walls and those barriers and allowing everyone to see them. So just check out some of these images, they're really beautiful. And so this before and after, she says that it made a huge difference, that suddenly women were doing more referrals, people were more interested, and it really started to turn things around in her business. Another thing that she did was that she began pricing her services differently. And instead of pricing at the kind of bottom end of the, the price range, she began marketing herself as a kind of uh, high-end photographer. So she wasn't afraid to start charging more, to start actually putting packages together that would encourage people to spend more on their photography uh, product. So all this kind of stuff. And it's a really interesting thing to bear in mind that how, who are you marketing to and how are you marketing? Because if that's the purpose of your blog, then you want to, you know, don't be afraid to to market yourself to people that have a budget that's above average. This is what I love about Sue's work is that she knew she provided an amazing service, so she went out and wasn't afraid to to, to put a price on her stuff that reflected that, and she created. A, a huge following of people that are really into her things because what I should have mentioned at the start is that she's actually she's won, she's the Australian Portrait Photographer of the Year she's won a ton of awards and her blog's actually very slow to load this is uh, something to bear in mind it is a photography website though so it's kind of understandable but she's um, yeah, here we go Look at all these awards that she's won. She says that she wants women 
she says, a personal session with me will change the way you see yourself. So see here, this is something, okay, so, so what we're touching on here in terms of blogging is A, showing how, through your blog, how you provide an increase or a value to someone's life, and then showing, she's got kind of like the social proof is what people call it, is proving to people why they should, you know, buy your service, read your blog, whatever it is. So here we've got all these awards that she's won to kind of show, you know, I'm not just some big small town photographer, I've actually been internationally and nationally recognized. And the reason I came across Sue was that I was Googling photographers and women and she's done a lot of work where she does these workshops online, Creativity Live, and she'll teach photography classes which are free if you watch them as they happen and afterwards that you can buy buy them. But there's tons of these and she's all over the internet. So if we just check out her Alexa ranking. So Alexa ranking is a way of looking at how much traffic, how many people look at a website. So she's got a rank of 296,252 sites link into her, very slow to load. So that's, if you've seen the other episodes, we had rankings of around 30 to 40,000. So this is, probably doesn't get as much traffic as, as those websites. In fact, it doesn't. But it's still, it's still pretty good. It's still, especially seeing as this is her blog, it's not even her main website. Okay? So she's still getting, for someone who started out in a photography studio on, somewhere in Australia, she still has a little, enough rank to be, you know, in the top 300,000 websites on the internet. And just think of how many websites there are. So, so she has this social proof. Something else that we want to bear in mind when we're looking at how, how good a blog is, is, is the blog easy to read? Is it scannable? Are people going to want to come back? So let's go to the blog part of her blog. Okay, so... I'm not sure if it's my computer or if her blog is just extremely slow. <laughs> oh, oh, I think I have it open here anyway. Okay, so this is actually her blog. So, obviously, Sue's a photographer. This is going to be a, a very visual blog, but she does mix it up, it's not just photos and she doesn't have huge long chunks of text which you sometimes see on, on photography websites where it's like one or the other she has a nice mix she has resources that other photographers can use like this, these cards here she, she makes videos and they're really beautiful actually, let's just watch this one go and watch that later if you like <laughs> but isn't it beautiful just beautiful images music and she has a, a kind of a specific style and it's really quite quite amazing that she's done all this stuff when she began as a 
just a portrait photographer. And let's look here at something that she does very well, which is to use Pinterest. And Pinterest, if you don't know much about it, I recommend you you do some research into it because it's it's a great way to get people sharing your stuff. Like 80% of the pins you see on Pinterest, which is essentially like a big uh, a big cork board that people can post stuff on virtually that they like. 80% of it is people repinning other people's stuff. So if you can be part of the 20% that's pinning original content, then eventually people will start sharing your stuff because it will be part of the new stuff that's coming in. So here we have actual budgets to make that even easier that Sue's put in here. And her work lends itself really well to, to Pinterest, obviously, being so visual. So, so we've got, in terms of is this easy to read, pretty much, isn't it? I mean, there's lots of big photos. We have some text, but it's, it's broken up. So you don't look at it and think, oh, this is going to be a headache for my eyes. OK, and that's actually Sue herself. OK, so another thing to mention is that Sue has a really big following on Facebook. We go, oh, let's see, share it. She does status updates, which will get like 200 likes or you know, huge numbers of comments. And she says in her blog that she's very aware of connecting to people and connecting to her brand. So she says that when her bookings have gone down and business hasn't been so good, it's been because she's sort of lost that connection and to be aware of not doing everything about yourself. So she's always aware of talking to her, her customers, talking to the people that like her stuff and, and not just making it a me, me, me show. And that's like a, that's kind of like a basic rule of thumb in marketing is you want to put yourself in the shoes of the people that you'd like to attract to your business is what's in it for them. If it's all about you and your company, it won't necessarily connect to people because it's all just about you or that or the company. <laughs> so people can't see where they fit into that. So coming back to how she connects, she she has a personal style, which if you've seen the other episodes is also another component to a, a successful blog is making it making it really a, an extension of your personality. So it's not just a bland kind of corporate website. It's actually people feel that when they read the blog, they're they're really there with you and that they're really connected to you. Because that's basically what people are looking for. It's not I mean would you spend t time late at night surfing tons of corporate websites? <laughs> no, you wouldn't, because that would be so boring and not to sleep within 10 seconds. But you probably could spend some time surfing people's blogs, because there's more personality there. There's more, it's more social. You get more of a sense of people. And we're all massively curious and nosy people. We want to know what other people are doing. Otherwise, we'd all live on individual planets. <laughs> so when you're writing your blog and the copy, you know, the texts on your blog, you want to imagine that your reader is sitting right in front of you and that you're you're talking to them. So let's see how Sue does this. Well she you know, just look at her headline. You have three hundred thirty thousand days. How will you spend yours? Excelsior. So she's already talking to she's already got the you here. Instead of saying, I found out I have 30,000 days, how will I spend them? So she's actually directly talking to her reader here. And then she's talking about things in her family. My grandmother is here today. We'll be celebrating her birthday. And so then she's got, what the hell have I been doing? So it's, it's very, you know, it's, it feels like she's, sharing her thoughts and what's what's coming up in her life with her reader, who ma no matter who that is. I need your images. I look forward to seeing how you are doing. Okay, she's, she's really bringing the reader into her world. You see, there are days when I too am filled with inertia. Don't be afraid to connect. 
Know you're worth it. I'm building a web page. Yeah. So she has, she does have this sort of her personality coming through her blog. So is she providing value through her blog? Is she providing, is her blog, like you want to think about whether your blog posts and your blog, is it inspiring? Is it entertaining? Or is it informative? You know, these are the kind of things that people will want to read when they're looking on the internet. So how does Sue's blog do with that? Well, she has it's certainly very entertaining. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> she has the videos like the one we just watched. It also provides value because it she has resources for other photographers. She has, if we look at the categories, she has advice for them like marketing and business, my philosophy. She has this is one of the main categories in her blog which takes ages to load <laughs> um, and she she does like to give advice, likes to share what's worked with her and that's the kind of thing that will keep people coming back to her, her blog. So then calls to action, is she giving people suggestions and ideas of what to do? This is another important element of a successful blog because it will it builds your influence. The more that you're, you're, you know, you're not necessarily, you're not telling them what to do in an evil kind of way, but you're just giving them a kind of, okay, before I leave, this is what you can do next. A way of building more connection, of getting them to actually take action on something, and to, to just kind of deepen the experience they have from reading your blog post. So. Let's see what she's doing. I actually didn't notice that many calls to action on her on her blog, to be honest. Apart from when she's asking, oh, okay. Well, we do have here. Are you prepared to put your website up for a public critique by the public? Info. Uh huh. So she does, she does have calls to action in some of her things. I think she could also be adding, comment below, did you enjoy this? Comment below. Something else I would add if I was Sue is some way for people to, to connect to her on a newsletter. I'm not sure if she has a newsletter. There's no mention of it on her blog, and there's nowhere to sign up for it. But this would, I believe, would help her to build a, even more uh, kind of a business that keeps growing and that's less kind of roller coaster. A lot of people have roller coaster businesses. I'm not saying that Sue's is like this. Uh, Sue's is obviously doing very well, but having an email list will allow her to email people as much as she wants and share what she's doing with them so it doesn't just rely on them going to her blog. If she was, I'm sure she'd probably have a higher Alexa ranking over here if she was doing that because she could write a blog post and then email her newsletter list saying, look I just wrote this blog, or I just put some beautiful pictures on the blog, go and have a look and tell me what you think of them and that would increase people commenting, commenting on her blog, which would also make the blog more appealing to Google, you know, so that when people are searching for photography or women's photography or glamour photography, her website would be quite likely to show up because then there's obviously a lot of interaction. You've got to think of Google a bit like a big playground. You know, websites that people are going to look at a lot and people are interacting with, they're talking to, it's like someone in a playground that has, that's connected to everyone, that knows everybody, that talks to everybody and that is really sociable, you know, if you wanted to, if someone came along and said, oh, who knows this person, everyone would look at the most connected person and that's what Google does, it looks at the websites in each niche, in each niche which are 
the most popular, that get the most views, the most people commenting. Uh, and I think Sue could capitalize on her gifts and on her success that she already has even more by having, you know, here she could have a, an opt-in to her newsletter and she could be building her own community, which she does have already, but, you know, it would just be even stronger. So I'm just going to check and see if she has that on her actual website. Maybe she does. Oh, it's the same. So she doesn't. Huh. She does provide a way for people to connect to her on Facebook. So let's have a look at this. 38,000 likes. 3,000 people talking about her. Maybe I should have told you that at the beginning. <laughs> And so this is probably her main way of communicating with people is through social media. I think having an email list would not take up much more time and would allow her to go to even another level. So that's, uh, that's something that, that's a suggestion from the magic blog. <laughs> okay, so coming back to her website, we've covered is it scannable? We covered how much traffic is it getting, how many people are looking at it. We've covered social proof. Is she telling people why they should spend time with her, why she should even be um, in their world? Yes, she is, because she's showing how many awards she's won. She could, I think, she could even do more with that. She could explain the fact that she really turn around her business. I think that would appeal to a lot of people. I only know that because I watched some of her workshops at one point. I was really inspired by her and I just wrote that down. So I just, I know that from then, but it's, I haven't seen it on her blog. So that's something I think she could share and that would inspire other women, other photographers, men as well. So we also covered whether it's, oh, Sorry, there's something else that could be mentioned here before we wrap up, is how many different types of people is she appealing to? You want to bear in mind that you have, you know, a lot of people tend to market to people like them. So, so what can happen is you have a lot of people involved with your business as customers or clients who are like you, which is fine, but not everyone on the planet is like you. <laughs> there are, you know, if you're quite visual, I personally, I'm, I'm very visual. If someone explains something to me and they only use words, I it will take me a little, about twice as long to understand it as if they just draw me a picture or a diagram, or if I can see something with my eyes, you know, online. So, to me, a, a blog like Sue's, I love it because it's just pictures. I understand what she's doing. Some people like to hear things to understand it. So, she has the video. Although she doesn't do much talking in that. But she could have, you know, like a, a podcast or or she could have some of the recordings from her, some clips from her workshops. I think that could appeal to people and allow them to connect to her through that way. And some people are much more, it's called kinesthetic. So they're, they're much more the feeling and the emotions they get from looking at something. So I think she does that quite well because obviously you look at her before and after and, and there's a clear difference. It, it, it's quite quite breathtaking a lot of the time. Just seeing this transformation of these women who think that they're, you know, totally different from models and then just goes to show that we're all models, we're all beautiful and that there's no need to put some people on a, a pedestal. I actually read a book where it was really interesting. They talked about how a lot of Film actresses, if you if you really look at them in detail, you actually probably know a woman who's just as beautiful as she is, but the main difference between the two women is that one knows or works her beauty. She like she believes that she's a film star, that she's the one of the most beautiful women in the world, and the other woman doesn't. So Sue's on, kind of on a mission to really bring that out in women and and maybe you think that that doesn't matter, that women doesn't matter how they look, but that's kind of besides the point here. The point here is to look at how well she's doing that because that's something that Sue wants to do with her marketing and the magic blog's verdict is she's doing a great job of it. 
the before after is so simple but so genius because it really shows women the difference from working with her okay so that's all we're going to cover today for the magic blog I hope that this was useful for you to take a, work, a trip into Sue Bryce's world and to see you know that it's possible to to change your situation if you're in a situation where your business isn't as successful as you'd like you know think of Sue's story and look at how you're marketing yourself you know are you making it easy enough for people to find you and and just know that marketing can really help with that so now that you've watched this comment below and tell me what you got out of it and if you don't have a way to make the internet really expand your business then click the link below this video because I'll share with you what I've been using in my business to really make it work for me 24-7 not just when I'm physically in front of people providing a service uh, you know it's just totally blown my reality to realize how much you can have the internet do that for you and how much that can help you kind of unlock the wizard you have inside you <laughs> I think a lot of people think that the internet is really complicated or marketing is really complicated but we all have a marketing genius or wizard inside us so I'm really on a mission to help people unlock that and help them unleash it so that they know it's not this impossible dream it's actually something they can apply to their life and their business no matter what they're doing okay so click on the link below this video leave a comment and if you have any suggestions or you'd like to see a particular blog go under the magic blog um, microscope then get in touch and uh, let me know okay thank you for watching and see you soon